Blog Talk Radio. It's the V-Spot. I'm your host, Dr. Vic Tater. My co-host is Bill Foster. V-Spot Radio is brought to you by Planet Dictator Blog Network. Get everything you need and a few things you truly do not want. Only at Planet Dictator. Hey everybody, we're on the air tonight. We're going to be speaking to Ken Kerchival, who played Cliff Barnes on the legendary TV show Dallas. We, we were going to talk to him Friday, but we had some scheduling conflicts. Uh, so mainly, it was mainly my fault. Now, we've got a few other features set up. Hello. Hello, Victor. Yes, sir. This is Ken Kirchhoff. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, what I'd like to ask you first is, uh, how did you get into acting? Oh, God. Oh, that's a, I don't think you have enough time this evening for that. You know, I don't think so. I, I started out as a singer, and uh, I wanted to be a singer, and I I did go to New York. I went, well, and then uh, I went to college. I went to New York City. I studied acting at the Neighborhood Playhouse, and then I studied afterwards, and then I just made my rounds and went to auditions and finally started to work. All right, how did you uh, find out about Dallas? My agent. My agent called me and, and said uh, I had an audition, so I went. All right, so when you got, did you expect the show to get picked up or last for any length of time? Now what? Did you expect the show to be as big as it was, or did you think it was just any other job? It was a job. It was a job, that's all. All right, uh, how did you, because uh, Cliff over the years changed a lot, uh, how did you uh, view him in the beginning? Well, I just uh, I just read the script and felt like it should be played a certain way, and as it, the script changed, right, then I changed to uh, fit what was being written. That's my job. Uh, were there ever any points over the years where you thought that the uh, writing might have been taking liberties with Cliff? Uh, no. 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 It was my job. Uh, my job. My, 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 my job was simply to read the script, interpret the script, and go to work. All right, so you so there over time there were several any, uh, points where you feel like that you'd have a harder time getting into it than before. What was that again? Uh, like, would there would there be a storyline that you would have a hard time uh, wrapping your head around, uh, try to find an angle on it? Well, uh, no, no, not not really. I got uh, tired in the in the. First time around, I got tired of being defeated by Jr. But you know, I think that uh, I think the strength of the show was you know that old adage, the Hatfields and McCoys. I think that the uh, the conflict between his character and my character is ostensibly what uh, what kept the show going for all of those years. Because uh, you know, n- nobody's interested in just father knows best. You know, uh, you forgot your lunchbox today, and. I th- Thought you wanted peanut butter and jelly. I don't. You know, that, I'm sorry. That that doesn't hold. There has to be some kind of a conflict in there. And you know, Jr. The character of Jr. And, and Cliff Barnes. They they supplied that conflict. Oh, uh, definitely. I agree. I started watching the show. Uh, I started watching the show in full a couple of years ago. I used to watch it with my father when I was a little kid, but I couldn't remember much of it. Yeah. And. Watching it now, I really feel like that Cliff was Cliff and Cliff really carried the show in a lot of ways as much as Jr. did. Did he what? I thought I think Cliff carried the show as much as Jr. did in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you uh, now in the late early seasons they switched uh, the actors that played Digger? Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's because David, David Wade, who did the pilot film of that, when it came to when the show got picked up, why he wasn't available to do it, so uh, they cast somebody else. That's simple. That's the way it works. Do you think if they hadn't switched the actors that they would have still killed Digger off? Did they what now? Do you think they still would have killed Digger off if they had, if David Wayne had stayed? Uh, well, I don't. I I I don't know that they would have. I I, I have I have no way of knowing that. You know. Right. I yeah. Uh, when the show became big, how did the uh, fame? Uh, did uh. Did you realize how famous you were? No, no, no. I, you know, I, I never got into that uh, celebrity aspect of it. I just said, no, that didn't really interest me. I just, I was interested in the job. All the rest of the stuff that goes along with it, what, you know, that's so goes it. But, uh, you know, somebody recognizes you as you going to work and says what a great job you did and all that. Now, that doesn't make it, make it that when you go to work, it doesn't mean that you're going to do the job better simply because somebody said they liked what you did. No, no. Uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you, uh, a couple of years ago, I was reading up on you. You did a stage production of White Christmas. Yeah, uh, I, did did last, I, did, I did it last year. Okay, how 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 was that? How do you enjoy doing that? Well, I I, I did stage in New York for 22 years, and that's always been has always been my preference, and still is. And uh, so, about I guess been about five or six years ago, well, I had an opportunity to go over to England and do White Christmas on stage, and I did. And then I went back the following year, and then the following year, and then I I didn't go one year, and then. Uh, this past year, why I I, uh, I, uh, I did two episodes of Dallas. They hadn't called me to tell me that I was going to be back in the show, so uh, they, uh, they called about White Christmas, and I told my agent where I was going over there. And uh, she said, well, what if Dallas calls? I said, well, they haven't called. So uh, I decided to go. So I went, and uh, instead of shooting just one episode, they decided they would shoot two of them right away. And so then they waited until I got back from uh, England to uh, have me back on the show. Yeah. When did you when did you first hear about the Dallas coming back or the or yeah when did you first hear about that? Well, I I've heard about it for years and years and years. They've always said they wanted to bring it back, and you know, but you know, nothing ever happened. Uh, and actually, when this happened, I didn't hear about it right away. Uh, it was quite quite late. People used to always ask me if I was going to be in it. I said I had no idea. And they said, well, they certainly can't do it without without you. And my answer was, to that was, oh, yes, they can. And I hadn't heard anything until just like, a, I don't know, just a couple of months before, I think. And then I got a call from the producers and we met and we had lunch and they said, no, they wanted to have me back. And I said, that's fine by me. I'll be there. Were you surprised to see that your character was going to have such a large role on the show? I mean, you're not on every episode, but your character looms large. Well, I I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea, you know. Uh, And they didn't tell me up front. I don't think they knew exactly what they were going to do. And now I know, uh, well, I'm in L.A. right now, but I'm going back to Dallas tomorrow uh, to finish filming the last episode of the second season. And uh, I've, I've been involved in the last four episodes, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very heavy in them. As a matter of fact, this the final episode I'm very heavy in. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Do you think they expanded your role after Larry Hagman passed away? Uh, I have no idea. No idea. All right, uh, now, later on, because I've been talking, uh, you know, me and my friends, we've been keeping up with this since it came back, and with the reveal at the end of the season, of last season, that uh, Pamela was uh, Cliff's daughter, uh, yes. we kind of uh-huh. felt, like felt like it was taking Cliff into a, it felt 
like he kind of crossed the line at that point because on the old show, he always, you know, Cliff always seemed like a good guy even if he made mistakes. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah. Well, here it seems like that he's kind of crossed over the line into being a full-blown villain. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty bad. Yeah, no no doubt about that. Okay, since uh, I mean you've been on doing this role for so long, can you really uh, reconcile what this version of Cliff is doing compared to the old show? Well, I think that I think the the new younger cast, I I think they're very very good. I think the writers are. Uh, extremely clever and good. Uh, of course, television has changed because I think the quality of the show, just photography-wise, is much, much better, but it's all digital now, and I think the show has uh, uh, a better look than it did before, but I think that's only because the technology has changed. That it, wouldn't, uh, it, it would have a better look. I think, the, I think the directing and the photography and the costuming and... Uh, the cast, and I think it's all, I think it's, it, it, the total look of the show, I think, is actually better than it was before, but like I say, there's no reason why it shouldn't be. Well, no, that's not true. It could It could not be, but I, I think it is good. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite episode or storyline for, oh, from the, the Cliff had over the years? Uh, when I think my favorite one was when I, in the in the first series was when I first met my mother. Uh, there was a scene there that uh, I I heard about it for years and years and years and years and years. They would say, "Oh, I remember when you first met your mother." Uh, after not having been in touch with her for so many years, I heard about that particular scene for years. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, one of my that was one of my favorites when I was watching the series on DVD. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I thought, it, I thought that was a really, you know, and Cliff always came across to me as a very, uh, of all the characters, he seemed like the very nuanced character. Yeah. Now, where, where where are you located right now? I'm in Alabama. Oh, in Alabama. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me, uh, I wanted to ask you about something, because I was doing research on you, and I found this old People magazine article that said that you were in the popcorn business one time. I was, yeah. I owned a popcorn company back in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, what, made, what made you decide to get into that business? Well, I grew up in farm country in Indiana, and uh, uh, my uh, maternal grandfather and my two uncles, they were farmers, and I grew up in farm country, and I just, I just kind of always wanted to be a farmer. So I decided, well, I'll, I'll be a farmer. So I bought this popcorn company. Uh, what, hand, what would you do? Uh, what were you, did you have any day-to-day -day activities doing that? Uh, well, it, I, my, it was mainly in promotion and sales. However, I did used to, in October, when they would do the picking, when picking season, I would ask for time off, and I would go back to Indiana and, and ride the pickers and pick corn. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so uh, what did uh, so were you satisfied with that? Was it uh, did it did it uh, did it end up being a good business, or is it just something? That no, 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 no. Actually, actually, I found myself in the grocery business uh, because you have a product, but you still have to sell it, and you have to sell it to grocery stores. And grocery business is a very, very, very difficult business. Uh, it all depends on uh, it all depends on sales. And if you have somebody that's, uh, well, if you have or Orville Redenbacher uh, up, against, up against Orville Redenbacher, who's not owned by Redenbacher anymore, why, it's, it's a tough road to hoe. It really is. Uh, let me uh, go back to the show for a minute, because I'm sure you've been asked about this uh, a lot. Uh, when you found out that they were going to bring back Bobby, uh, they were going to bring Patrick you uh, Duffy to play Bobby Ewing, and they were going to just dismiss one season as a dream. Did you have uh, any feelings about that one way or another? About what now? When they decided to make season eight or seven one uh, into a dream. I, I I didn't understand your question. Uh, what was your feelings on the dream season? Were you uh, did you have any feelings about it one way or another? The what season? The dream season. The one. Oh, that yeah, I know, I know, I know, no, 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 no,
that was that wasn't very satisfying to anybody. That sort of became a joke. Yeah. But uh you know, I had no I no I no, it was it was not a very good idea. Except it did get Patrick Duffy back into the show, so in that sense why it worked. Do you think it was the uh, do you think it was, it was the best option of a bad of a bad crop? Well, I you know, I, I think they didn't know what to do. They 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 didn't know what to do, so they chose to do that. And uh, like I say, if, nobody seemed to have liked it. But uh, like I say, it got Patrick back into the show, so that's that. Uh, one thing you uh, did, you did a TV movie in 1989 or 90, I think. The one of the the second I Dream of Genie movie. What 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 movie? The second I Dream of Genie reunion movie. I didn't understand. I'm sorry. Uh, you did the second I Dream of Genie reunion movie. The second uh, Audrey. Our, you I know, our, connection, our, our connection is not that good. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's on my cell phone. Uh, are we going to be much longer? Because I'm getting another call. Oh, that's fine. Uh, thank you for joining us. Indeed. Have a good night. Thanks. You too, bro.